Welcome back to Daybreak. If you're like me, you enjoy the holidays for many reasons, spending time with friends and family, maybe a couple of days off. Most importantly, though, you get to eat some really good food. One man who's responsible for getting that food ready for many Austinites over the years is Brian Butler. He's been the butcher at Salt and Time in East Austin since 2013, and he's one of the best meat cutters in the entire country. Uh, this is my uh, scabbard, my tool belt, basically. Um, holds all my uh, knives. Those knives, uh, the main reason this take this job is a little different. I thought best if I stayed away from the cutting of the meat, just let the pro handle it. I watched and learned. One of the most uh, horrific injuries you can see is somebody grabbing for a piece of meat that they laid a knife on top of and cut their palm open because that's a long time injury. It's going to bother you for a while. And after getting geared up, Brian walks us through a breakdown of beef. Yet another reason I was mainly a spectator. Breaking down beef is hard. All right, this is what we call a dressed four-quarter beef. Uh, it's the front, animal, front part of the animal. Uh, this upper section here would be the neck right here. This would be the chuck section here up until the fifth and sixth rib. Then this is our rib section where our ribeye comes from. Mmm, ribeyes. And then our brisket, which heck, everybody knows what that is, as well as our beef skirt right here, which is also a big favorite. Also known as fajitas around here. And so one of the main things that's different about this than what we get in grocery stores is that this has never been in a bag. This has been allowed to hang naturally for a minimum of 14 days. It's called dry aging. Butler will dry age some steaks for up to 52 days. Those, of course, are the expensive cuts. Many times they don't even make it to the case. People want them so badly. You know, you want to be sure that that when you do this, that you're flat to the ground and you're using constant pressure. Because Butler took home the title of the best butcher in the entire state of Texas earlier this year. He's now training to compete for the United States in the World Butchers Challenge. That competition will be held in Ireland next year. So what I'm trying to do is cut around and do as little damage to the really good stuff. If you could hand me that saw, I'm See, that. I was there helping out where I could. So, Handing him tools is about the only job I was qualified for in this room. So yeah. Hey, that's hard work. Physical, man. You gotta be strong to do that. Yeah. After breaking this one down, Brian turns his focus to the case. That's where you find the cuts that are ready to sell. These are some just classic cut. Uh, chuck roast here, they're nice and thick. You see these in grocery stores like this. It's a combination of several different cuts, yeah, and for you veggie stuff. lovers out there, Erica, they do use vegetables. Oh, see? I go around these edges here. Uh, that's kale as a garnish in the case. So that would be one of our trays. I'm going to grab a couple other things we can cut just real quick. Another tray has my favorite beef ribs. There's really a little bit of everything yeah. in the case on any given day, from chicken to pork, lamb to beef. I've wanted people to challenge me, like, what's a cut that you can't get anywhere else? But you can see I do the whole animal. So if it comes off of there, I can get it. I can get it, you know. Exactly, you know. And I really do like that. Brian's one of the best around. He says he enjoys educating those who come to Salt in Time, but he's also learning from those who might prepare and eat their meat in different ways. It's a profession that's been around for thousands of years and with meat cutters, slash butchers like Brian Butler, the future for carnivores around here is bright. Well, I can slice it really thin and the ends are done a little bit more for her and the middle is a little rarer for me. He just knew exactly what he was doing. I mentioned that international festival. That's a huge thing. These yeah. are guys from all over the country. Yeah. And we've got a link on our website where you can go. They've got a GoFundMe page set up because there's some expenses that go along with mm -hmm. that. So check out that story on there as well and uh, help these guys get over to Ireland for the competition. Oh. Those are some year. precise cuts. Oh, man. It, it looks so By the way, good. if you really think about it, how big was that cow? Like, that was yeah. actually a 900 pound Holy piece of meat, moly. which he Whoa. said even was bigger than what they would normally yeah. have. Uh, but he oh. held it just for us so we could go see how he does Holy it. Holy moly. He's strong. That thing was heavy. Yeah. And yeah. He, he just manhandled it. Oh. Now, if you have a job you'd like <laughs> us to try, we're going to keep on doing some jobs around here. Message us on Facebook, tweet at us using the at KVU or hashtag KVU in your tweets, and we'll. Uh, Email us at daybreakatkview.com. We'll have some more of these coming up. We've got some good ones already in the can, they mm -hmm. say. Super well, nice. Erica business. wants the kale, but she also wants the meat. She you like that, kale? I thought yeah. of you when he poured out that. I said, oh, kale, you're going to cook? Oh, no, just going to garnish, garnish with the kale. It. I actually don't eat kale, bread. No? I eat more meat <laughs> yeah. than veggies. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. so healthy, I meant. That's what yeah. I meant. You're yeah, just, I don't I like take that rip A lot healthier. <laughs>